A student was sobbing in my office. She had confessed to cheating. I was not to be her judge. Her conscience was already doing that, as evidenced by her muffled sobs. Rather, I saw my role to be her advocate and her friend, to help her think through her underlying motivations. So I said, when I do something that I shouldn't, it's because I've made something so supremely important that I think, if I could just have that, then I could be happy. When you cheated, what did you feel you had to have? She said, I felt I needed a good grade. And I said, what's behind your desire for a good grade? I'm tired of feeling like I'm surrounded by all these smart people and I'm just average. I want to be seen as smart. Now, I have compassion on her because I've felt that pressure too. After a pause, she added, I really did wrestle with the problem, but I was tired and I had so much other work to do, so I just looked for a solution online. I just wasn't sure I'd get the problem if I kept at it. Now the irony is that now she'll never know if she would have solved the problem. She's just reinforced the very insecurity she was trying to destroy. This was not an isolated incident. There were several others who cheated, and one by one I probed why they too were tempted. In each case, there was something that they felt they had to have to be happy. The acclaim of peers, the approval of parents, admission to a top graduate school, landing a good job. And why do you want a good job, I asked. Because then I will have a good life. I asked, what makes life good? Big question. After this, I had a conversation with my entire class, and I told them, I, I would be failing you as a teacher if you came away from my class thinking that grades were a measure of your self-worth, or if you felt your dignity came from your performance. And a student came up to me after class and asked, then where does our dignity come from? Big question. Does your dignity come from achievement? After winning his third Super Bowl, Tom Brady, Patriots quarterback, said in a 60 Minutes interview, why do I have three Super Bowl rings and still think there's something greater out there for me? I've reached my goal, my dream, my life. Me, I think, God, it's got to be more than this. The interviewer asked, what, what's the answer? Brady, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. This from a guy who just won his fourth Super Bowl and is married to a supermodel. Our society has made achievement an idol. An idol is anything you justify your life by, anything you feel you must have in order to be happy. In other words, something you worship. Our society worships achievement, perfect resumes, perfect bodies, perfect finances, in the quest for a perfect life. It's no surprise then that we pay doctors, supermodels, hedge fund managers hefty salaries. Our society works all the time. We feel an insane pressure to perform. We constantly compare ourselves to other people, asking, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I buff enough? And we can't be happy for another person's success. These are all clues that we've made achievement an idol. Have you ever felt any of these things? It is a never-ending rat race that ultimately leaves us all falling short. So if achievement is the basis of our dignity, we ironically can't achieve it. And when we fall short, we begin to choose image over substance. I confess I would rather people think I have a good life than work to figure out what makes life good. Just look at my Facebook profile. So it is tempting to take shortcuts, like padding your resume with 10 extracurriculars rather than investing in one truly meaningful activity, or cheating on an assignment rather than engaging in the productive struggle where the true learning happens. In the news recently, a prominent news anchor who exaggerated his record as a war journalist provides another example of shortcuts. Now, here is the good news. Your achievements 
are not the basis of your dignity. Your achievements are not the basis of your dignity. Understanding this would change the way you think about everything, including your education. You could look at grades differently as just an imperfect tool to assess your learning. There would be no shame in failure. You would not be afraid to make mistakes. You could have freedom from the burden of performance. But if achievements are not the basis of our dignity, what then is the basis for our dignity? Most people dignify what they worship. They choose idols. Some feel their dignity comes from beauty. But as beauty fades, so will that apparent dignity. Some feel dignity comes from money, but money doesn't buy happiness. The idols of our heart will never bring lasting dignity. But perhaps dignity doesn't have to be grounded in anything. Perhaps we can just declare that all humans must have dignity. But then how do I decide between competing claims about where dignity comes from? So, for instance, we say one thing but do another. Like when I say, we're all equal in worth, but then I pay more attention to the rich person than the poor person. Or when I say, all my students deserve dignity, but I only talk with the A students. Which claim has authority? Despite what we may say, dignity is always grounded in something you make ultimate. As a Christian, I believe we have a fundamental dignity grounded in God's love for us and not for anything we do. Let me emphasize again, the reason God loves you doesn't come from you or anything you do. Being moral or accomplished does not make God love you more. And this is good news. You can mess up and your dignity will not be tarnished. You can be unremarkable to the world, but yet you will still have dignity before God. And if you believe this, you will no longer be slaves to achievement. You can seek to be a doctor or a gardener purely because you're passionate about these things. You can fail without letting it define who you are. You can celebrate achievement without letting it get to your head because we recognize that achievement, as well as the skills that produce the achievement, are simply gifts of grace from a loving God. How can I believe that I have this fundamental dignity when the world tells me otherwise? That's been a journey for me. In college, I made achievement an idol. Even with my family turmoil, I worked my tail off, flying through as a top math student. But I got to grad school at Harvard and met people who were way better than me in what I thought I was the best at. And as a result, I felt threatened. Two professors changed my perspective. My first professor was my research advisor. He only spoke to me about work. He never showed any interest in me as a person, and when I made no progress on my research problem, said in a mean-spirited way, you don't have what it takes to be a successful mathematician. The second professor taught one of my classes. This guy would chat with me when we passed in the hallway, though he barely knew me. When my mother died, he told me how sorry he was, and then he took me out to, for coffee and a comforting conversation. Now, which one do you think I wanted to learn from. The first professor destroyed my idea of finding my dignity and my accomplishments, and for that I, I should probably thank him. I told the second professor that I thought about quitting, and he said, I'd rather you work with me than see you quit. And that was an amazing unearned favor that wasn't based on accomplishments, because I, I had no accomplishments. Christians have a word for that, and that's the word grace. Grace is good things you didn't earn or deserve, but you're getting them anyways. And when somebody shows you grace, you realize you have a dignity that doesn't come from your accomplishments. This is why Jesus, to me, is such a compelling figure. Because Jesus is the epitome of grace. He hung out with the social outcasts and the prostitutes and the widows. And he shunned the religious elite and the morally accomplished. So we know we don't need to be perfect to be loved by him. And most remarkably, Jesus bore the judgment for our misdeeds upon himself. So you can mess up, and God renders you forgiven and worthy. That's grace.